Uh, hello, and welcome back to Lord Tony Rambles About Crap. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Lord Tony, and today I want to take a slightly more nerdy approach to, uh, to the standard ramble so- sort of thing. Uh, you, right now you're looking at the screen, and if I have remembered to do this correctly, I have placed a number uh, in front of the video that you were looking at. Just a very large number, I believe in the 700 millions. And you're probably wondering, what is significant about that number? Well, um, I write programs out of boredom every now and again, just to kind of, you know, see strange things. And I know there's a lot of fanatics that like, you know, pi and binary numbers and whatnot, but I've always kind of liked random numbers. And that number is not, in fact, a random number, precisely. It is a seed for a random number generator. Now, um... If you don't know anything about programming languages, uh, generally, like, okay, so your computer isn't flipping coins inside the, uh, in, inside its brain or whatever. When, whenever you ask a computer for a random number, what it's generally doing is finding out what time it is, taking that number, and then doing something funky with it, and then handing back, you know, some random number based on the time. Or there's occasionally chips that can, um, that can, like, shoot and catch photons and stuff like that. Like, that that's a true random number chip there, but those things are few and far between. Uh, so, basically, what you're kind of left with in most programming languages, you have what is called a pseudo-random number generator. And um, in the programming language that uh, this number is special for, uh, C-sharp, this, this number right here, when put, uh, if you create just a standard random number generator with the line of code uh, random r equals new random, and then as the parameter for the random, you, you place that number you see right there, uh, that turns out to be the seed, which will, give, uh, which will give you 29 zeros in a row if you happen to call next two. On, uh, on that random number generator that you've seeded with that particular number. Now, um, yeah, basically, next two will... will e- basically, that is the line of code for flipping a coin. You're, you're effectively you know, feeding in the parameter two for uh, you know, how, many, how many sides of the dice or coins you want. Because in real life, you can't really flip a seven-headed die, but if I just put, like, random seven in there, it would give me the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six, chosen randomly. But in this case, with this one seed that I found, just by, just by writing little brute force code to search through the first billion numbers from, uh, from zero to, you know, one billion, uh, that number right there will give you 29 zeros in a row. So uh, I will continue to run this program in the future. Right, right now, uh, from... From about negative two billion one hundred million something like that, all the way up to uh, two billion or positive two billion one hundred something, uh, there those are all the potential seeds for a random number generator, and I intend to check every single one, not only for largest consecutive you know series of. Uh, uh, of zeros in a row or ones in a row or anything like that, which, by the way, I also have the number for, I guess you can get 27 ones in a row with this seed right here that I'm placing on the screen. Um, yeah, but meanwhile, like, th- this thing just takes a few hours to run because C-sharp is a generally, uh, generally a slower language because it's pseudo-interpreted. It's like, uh, it's one of those... It- it's kind of like Java in that regard. But, um... Yeah, so I will k- keep giving you back some random numbers every now and again, relevant to C Sharp and Java. Like, basically, I can just run these. Li- these programs are super easy to write. You just brute force check every number from negative two billion one hundred million all the way up to positive two billion one hundred million ish, and um, yeah, that gives you every possible seed. And then you basically just fire the program off and let it let it run all four billion of those numbers. And it, chances are, to go from negative 4 billion to positive 1 billion, probably, my guess right now, would take, take 10 hours, 16 hours, something like that. But hell, if I'm, if I'm going to go to sleep anyway, I might as well run these programs overnight and find what the absolute maximum best seed is in several situations. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing next two with, uh, with the seed like I've been doing, I'm going to do a next, si- uh, a next six, yeah. So that way I can, you know, find out what the optimal uh, seed to use to roll high numbers of dice are in particular. Then I'll, 
come back and tell you about that stuff. So if you're really interested in both C-sharp and random numbers, uh, then you know you might be able to impress your friends with uh, maybe uh, your other computer science-y friends with saying, hey, this guy on the internet, uh, he found... He found a random number that generates, uh, or sorry, a random number seed that generates an incredibly long sequence of uh, of zeros. Okay, well, it's not really incredibly long, but if you take uh, here, let me let me look at a calculator here. Basically, the odds of uh, of actually flipping a coin uh, 29 times in a row is 2 to the 29th power, and that turns out to be 536. Uh, here, I'll just put up the number on the screen also. There, it's that number. Um, yeah, so actually I turned out to be a little unlucky. If I was a bit luckier, I would have found 30 in a row in, in a billion checks. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling that uh, in all the random numbers I'll probably be able to get a random, uh, I'll probably get, be able to get a sequence of maybe about 35 zeros in a row and 35 ones in a row, in which case I will report back and put one of those links on this video. So hopefully you're autistic as hell like I am and enjoyed hearing that this number right here, once again, is the sequence to get 29 zeros in a row. If you seed your random number generator with that number, you're using C sharp and you only use calls to next two. And uh, hopefully I'll, you know, put all that crap up on the on the screen too. Maybe I'll put all this stuff up at once, so that way I only have to make one image. Yeah, that sounds like the lazy thing to do. I'll totally do it. Anyway, happy random number generating.